Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to more action from the Short Track Thunder. It is a beautiful evening here at the Lucas Oil Raceway as we get set to go racing for the second meeting out of 18 here for this Short Track Thunder series. It's going to be an action-packed night of racing. And if the race we have in the season opener at the National Fairgrounds is anything to go by, we are in for one thrilling race here tonight. You've got yourself five races up for us here tonight. Started it off with the Pro Lay Model Division for a 50 lap run. That will be finished up by the Limited Modified Tour. We'll roll to the Stock Truck Cup for their uh, second ra race of the season, followed by the Gen 4 Challenge for their first race, and then the Super Lay Model Division will be out for their second out of 12 races as well. Meanwhile, welcome to the Pro Lay Model Division. 50 laps with a field of 15 cars. It should be a very, very good race. Competition caution this time around will be at lap number 15. For these Chevrolet Monte Carlo SSs, you know that it's going to be one solid race for us here tonight as we look over to the championship standings uh, coming on over into tonight. And you can see Casey Wells still on point with Carlos Montero right behind Eric Monaco. Took the third spot on the podium last week as well. We'll look through your uh, championship border when we are under our competition caution. But for now, it's time for the starting grid uh, here from the Luke Soil Raceway. Casey Wells on pole position with Eric Monaco just two hundredths of a second behind him in second. Corey Rivers will start in third with Jack Cooper in fourth. Carlos Montero will be in fifth with Alex Benoit in sixth. Michael Brown is seventh with LJ Toledo in eighth. Jeff Kenner is ninth. Mitchell Hodak rounds out the top ten. But they got Nathan Orman in eleventh. Alan Tudor in twelfth. Colin Gropley is thirteenth. Paul Bain is fourteenth. Edward Hillberry is fifteenth. Ross Smith is sixteenth. Ben Cohen rounds out 17th place for your 17 car field on the Pro Lane Model Division for race number two. Bound to be one action-packed race for us here tonight as we look set to continue with what should be an amazing short track thunder season. The Pro Lane Model Division at the National Fairgrounds, one of the more exciting races we had there on the night. Still, I've not had any yellow flags, though, for crashes on the racetrack. Pace cars down and in. Two pit road. Field coming around. Three and four. Green We're green flag racing for the Lucas Oil Raceway. Side by side for first place down in the turns one and two for the second time tonight. The 43 car out in front. Casey Wells, but he is having a hard time trying to keep Eric Monaco behind. Monaco falls to second. Here comes Jack Cooper looking for third up the inside, but he can't end up going anywhere. That's the thing about Lucas Oil Raceway. It is a top line heavy racetrack, so we're going to be seeing that outside lane playing a big factor in the racing here tonight. Looking back to Michael Brown working the inside line from LJ Toledo with the Taco Bell Chevrolet. The 80 car on the bottom side. You've got the 32 of Alex Benoit just ahead of them. That's just tucked in line. As we ride on board with Michael Brown down to the turn. Numbers one and two once more. Already a fairly big spread starting to open up throughout this field, but this is where all the action is at. Way in the background, look at the 13 car trying to hound up to the back end of Toledo's number seven. You got the 21 as well in the thick of this here for Nathan Orman, Jeff Kenner. In the Mopar number 70 also in the thick of this. Down the back straight away, lap number five. Now the 80 goes to the outside. The 32 still working down low. Benoit trying to find some speed from the low line.
problem is it's so challenging to be able to find some speed on that inside line. You really have to take full advantage of every mistake that these guys make that you can. And all this side-by-side -side battling is allowing fourth place on up to start to pull away. Picking up the battle for first. It's also picking up for second place. The 26 of Cooper trying to work the inside of Eric Monaco, but there's no room. All the while, Casey Well still running the top lane and is pulling away. About halfway to our competition caution, which will come now once we have 35 laps to go. Top four pulling away. The bottom three are falling back with Edward Hillberry, Ben Cohen, and Ross Smithley right at the tail end of the field. This is the biggest group in the cars you've got from about sixth on back to round the 13th position. These guys have not had one laugh when they have not been side by side somewhere in this pack, which is exactly what you want to see with this type of racing. The issue is it's so difficult to make a pass that it's doubtful that any of these overtake attempts are actually going to go anywhere. You see Alan Tudor, the Dollar General 71, just losing out on the 61 errands machine of Alan Tudor. Sorry, that was Paul Bain that just dropped back. And the Waffle House machine of Nathan Orman works around the outside McDonald's car of Mitchell Hodak. Casey Wells just crosses the start finish line. One lap left to go in the opening stage of the night. Eric Monaco still hanging around within a third of a second, but I don't think he is going to be able to get there. Coming off of turn four. And it is going to be Casey Wells to take the uh, competition caution. And we're on the yellow flag for the first time tonight. There's a groupings of cars on this first stage of the night. It's Wells from Monaco, from Cooper, Montero, Benoit rounds out the back of the field. We'll take a quick step back. We'll be back with more here from the Lucas Oil Raceway in just a moment.
Welcome back to the Short Track Thunder. We are still under the competition caution and getting set to, I believe, go green flag racing uh, next time by. Rounding lap 17 out of 50 in your pro lane model division for the uh, opening race here of this second Short Track Thunder event. Next race out will be another 50 lap run, but it'll be for the limited, uh, the limited modified series, followed by the Stock Truck Cup, the Gen 4 Challenge, and the Super Late Model Division. One lap to green. We get set to go green flag racing this time by. No drivers want to lap down, and everybody's still on the lead lap. So far, Corey Rivers is the driver that needs to make up some ground. He's down five from where he started tonight. By far the most dropped out of anybody so far today. Pace car is in, and we're back to green. Monaco pulls around the outside of Casey Wells. Down the back straightaway and into three and four. Can he hang on, though, out of the final corner? Gets tight between the Hardys and the X-Side machine as we blaze it back down into turn number one. Still side by side, two rows deep. Eric Monaco not letting Casey Wells go. I think he's started to realize if he doesn't get around him here, he's not going to be able to later on in the race. And how about that? Outside pass. Can he make it stick out of three and four? Casey Wells still trying to stuff it into the center of the corner. I think he's got it, though. Outside line. Oh, maybe not quite. Still trying to work with it. It's going to be one close race for the lead, though you know that much, all the way down to the checkered flag if this is how it's going to get set to develop. Jack Cooper has a perfect view of the whole battle right in front of him. And this time, Monaco's got him. Eric Monaco secures the lead for the first time tonight. It's now going to be up to Casey Wells to see if he can't reel him back in. You see Carlos Montero, the 88 car on the outside line, also struggling against Alex Benoit. This is the battle for the last spot on the podium positions. But it looks like the 88 car Montero will clear Cooper through three and four down the front straightaway. That's gonna open up the door for Alex Benoit now to try to work his way around the 26 car. Once again, making it an outside pass, and that's a very easy one there as Cooper falls back. Take a look further back in this field. You've still got battles left, right, front, and center. Going three wide off of turn number four. The 66 Pontiac being stuck in the middle of the 11 of Colin Cropley and LJ Toledo. Tight squeeze there for the 66, but he's able to hang on with it. And you can see Jack Cooper trying to battle back against the number 32 car.
over halfway through this pro lane model race. 22 laps to go out of 50. But Alan Tudor now working his way up to Toledo, who has now dropped the most balls out of anybody. Down six. Sorry, make that uh, Corey Rivers, who's down nine, but he is still a few spots up the road. Lots of great, great racing, though. It so far has been completely clean. No rubs just yet. A couple of pinches here and there. But this racing has been absolutely phenomenal. As you now see the 11 of Cropley getting caught up in the mix of this as well. And Corey Rivers also under fire from the Taco Bell machine. Also got this fight for seventh and eighth between Jeb Kenner and Michael Brown. The Octan and Mopar machine starting to do battle in the one and two. And also in this battle, Paul Bain and the Dollar General Chevrolet late model right behind these guys. You already see how much of a struggle it is for these guys to try to make up spots and keep them uh, in firm hands as Mitchell Hodak, the 13 car under fire from Nathan Ormond up in sixth. Looks like Hodak might have secured that fight, and in fact he has, as Nathan Orman's gonna back out. Cooper looks to the inside of Benoit, though. This is now for fourth. Colin Cropley continues to try to make up ground on as he now works on LJ Toledo, but you see as the competitors start to pull further and further away uh, into the distance. Battle's also on for the race lead. Casey Wells has gotten to the inside of Eric Monaco. Wanted to take the lead back in the closing stages of this race. The XI machine took the lead early from Monaco off of the restart, and now Monaco wants to get it back. Don't count out. Carlos Montero right behind these guys in the uh, Tires Plus machine. So battle for the lead has really uh, kicked off from the Lucas Oil Raceway and Short Track Thunder for the Pro Late Model Division. The assault on Air Monaco has fallen for Casey Wells, and now he's going to find himself on defense as he tries to keep Montero behind him. Not quite clear just yet. Montero throwing it in from the outside line into three and four. That little bit of progressive banking really helping Montero out as he continues to charge for the second podium position, but it looks like he's also going to be forced to back out. Still got this fight, though, for fifth between Cooper 
and Hodak. Hodak now up into the top five. Now entering the closing laps of this race, under 10 laps to go. It is looking as though lap traffic will not play a factor into this race. But you know it will later on tonight when we get to some of the bigger divisions like the Gen 4 Challenge for their season opener. Paul Bain working the outside line still of Jeb Kenner. Dollar General up against Mopar as the 71 continues to try to fight his way around, but so far, Paul Bain just has not had too much success when he's been on offense. That's why he's been kind of just sticking around. He managed to crawl his way up to eighth, but he hasn't gone any further from there. Looks like he's gonna get around Kenner though here. And he will, so Paul Bain successfully makes up another spot. And Hodak once more under fire as we hit five to go. C. Wells once again looked low through one and two for the race lead. Wasn't able to get there. But not for lack of trying. He wants to go. Lap traffic on the horizon. Maybe it will play a small factor into the finale of this race. Three laps to go. Oh, he's got the run through turn four, looking low and trying to capitalize, can't get there. Here comes Montero up on the top shelf, and Montero will go through in the second place. That might be it there for Casey Wells, as Wells losing touch to Aaron Monaco already down by half a second. Eric Monaco powering though off of four to take the white flag. Lap traffic on the horizon, but it's not gonna be nearly enough for the two guys battling behind for a second to catch up. Monaco will lap the 56, power off of four, and win the Pro Lane Model Division. What a race then in the uh, pro lane model division here in the short track Thunder for a start to the second race. As always, you can't ask for better short track racing than what the late models have to offer. Take a look at your official post race results. And it is going to be Eric Monaco winning the race from Carlos Montero. Casey Wells rounds out the podium after Wells Fell back to third. Three seconds back is Alex Benoit along with Mitchell Hodak in fifth. Jack Cooper is in sixth. Nathan Ormond was in seventh. Paul Bain made up the most spots out of anybody. He was plus six. He finishes in eighth. Jeb Kenner was ninth. Michael Brown rounds out the top ten. 
Corey Rivers dropped the most spots out of anybody. He lost eight. He finishes in 11th with LJ Toledo in 12th. Colin Cropley is in 13th. Alan Tudor is 14th. Ben Cohen is 15th. Edward Hillberry was in 16th with Ross Smithley rounding out the field in 17th place. Going to... And we are back for more action here in the Short Track Thunder for our second race from the Lucas Oil Raceway. This time we're going to be kicking off with the Limited Modified Series. 22 cars and a 22 car SK Modified Field. Should mean we are in for one exciting season opener as the Modifieds get set to take it to the racetrack for the first time in this uh, first ever Short Track Thunder Series. Going to get straight to it with your starting grid here, not wasting any time today. Mateo Whitaker is on pole position with Chris Harvey, 12 thousandths of a second off in second place. Eric Monaco is in third with Scott Gray in fourth. Trent Kirkshaw is in fifth with J.B. Tanner in sixth. Gary Newbury is in seventh. Ezekiel Froze is eighth. Casey Wells is in ninth. Mitchell Hodak rounds out P number 10. Herbie Weatherman is in 11th. Colin Cropley is in 12th. From there, you have got the likes of Alex Benoit in 13th with Nathan Norman in 14th. Then it goes LJ Toledo, Keith Marks, Ryder Chisholm, Darcy Byron, Michael Brown, Casey Knoll, Ben Cohen, and Kurt Newton bring up the field. Just like the lane models, there are two separate divisions for the Modified Series. You've got yourself the Limiteds, and then you have yourself the Tour Modifieds. The Limiteds are the slower of the two. They'll be making their first start uh, here tonight at the Luxor Raceway in just a few moments' time. Meanwhile, for the uh, Tour Modified Division, I believe, yep, they are going to be coming on up for their first round over uh, next time around at the Hickory Motor Speedway. For now, though, the pace car is going to bring them around turn numbers three and four for the second time today, leaving now in the hands of Mateo Whitaker. As the field of 22 SK Modified Strong comes around the corner, we are once again a green flag racing for the Lucas Oil Raceway.
fairly decent launch so far throughout this field as these drivers continue to blaze our way down track for what has been no doubt an absolutely amazing show then here tonight as we round lap number two out of 50. Competition Yellow will be coming on out at lap number 20 in this race. Looking for the inside is Chris Harvey going to the inside of Matteo Whitaker. This is for the race lead. Can the inside work better for the limited modifieds? They did it for the pro lane model. They're able to run these corners so much quicker than the mo late models where it would not surprise me if we saw that inside line come into play as Whitaker, sorry, Chris Harvey will lead a lap from the Lucas Oil Raceway as the field darts back down into turns one and two for the fourth time tonight. The number eight Sunoco car is up and into the race lead. Everybody's still in one giant pack. The draft actually affecting these cars down these straightways and in the corners. It's so fast with these machines, especially these opening laps. You're not even going to be seeing these guys really lift. I mean, it's almost flat out through all of these corners. You'll lift a little bit on corner energy and then just power home on corner exit with how top heavy of a track this track is. While that does mean we stay nice and tight, it also means it will be fairly, fairly difficult if these drivers want to get themselves sorted up here uh, in this field as the rear cameras on these machines often struggling a little bit when it comes to uh, how these cars like to manage. So they might have some technical difficulties with those throughout the course uh, of tonight's race. Of course, uh, sometimes they mount, get mounted a little bit too low on the machines at the bottom of the ground. That's why you see the screen uh, cut into black every once in a while there. We're still green flag racing and still everybody in one giant line looking for the inside. It's... Scott Gray looking to bump Mateo Whitaker back down to third, or at uh, the third now as he makes the move for second in his high point machine. And on the track map, you can see everybody bar the bottom two of Ben Cohen and Kurt Newton still all in one giant line as we fire back down the front straightaway. Battle for second continues to pick up as Chris Harvey works to get around Matteo Whitaker. Harvey pulling away as Gray looks set to fall back to third. Eric Monaco, also in the thick of this, he wants to make his way up a few more spots yet. Already, we're 10 laps down. tell these are not the loudest cars in the world as well and no doubt that is uh, partially helped due to the fact that uh, they are limited of course their tour modified counterparts are significantly louder in comparison Mateo Whitaker has held on to second place for now, but you can still see these guys scrapping together as now Trent Kirkshaw and J.B. Tanner go side by side in the battle for uh, fifth place up on the racetrack with Scott Grant, the 20 car, right in front of them. Will they look for three off of the uh, exit of turn number two here? Looks like they might. The 20 car being put under some heavy pressure down the back straightaway. We're going to go three wide in turns three and four. With the 20 car way on the low side, he's able to hang tough. And now the top three pulling away for the rest of the pack. Three abreast with modifies down the back straightaway into turns number three and four. The 77 car work in the middle. Can Trent Kirkshaw make this one stick? He's got Tanner on the bottom. Gray up on top. From the bottom, the 20 car backs out. Tanner still fighting the outside line.
And pardon me, I did uh, misread my own uh, rule book on this one. The limited modified division will not be having the comp yellow at lap 20. The modified races run straight through to the end. And in fact, it's the tour modified division that has themselves a competition caution. Checking back in a little bit further down the field to Ezekiel Froze, trying to work with uh, Mitchell Hodak. Battle picking up for second place as well as Eric Monaco pulls the trigger on Braden, Mateo Whitaker, excuse me, down the back straight away. Mohawk machine working the inside line as Chris Harvey once again starting to pull further and further away up in front. How even a match these cars can be on such a fast track for these guys like the Lucas Oil Raceway. It's understandable that it will take them several laps sometimes to sort one of these battles out. That's why you still see them side by side like it's a high speed pace lap back behind fifth place here. Problem is all this side-by-side -side battling does drag in other drivers. Look at the 77 of Trent Kirkshaw, who's now thrown his hat into the ring of a, this fierce fight. And we're going three wide again into turn numbers three and four. The 20 on the bottom of Scott Gray. Casey Wells is in the middle, Mitchell Hodak up top. The high point machine going to keep it to the bottom side. So far, Scott and Gray has only been losing positions with the drop of the green flag. Not nearly as many of those Hermie Weatherman has, who is already down eight. A lot of these drivers are so evenly matched, but they lose so much time just fighting each other out like this that it's really costing them in the long run with some serious points. The 25 really having to jump on the binders there. Ryder Chismas, he got checked up by Mitchell Hodak. Now in the final half of this race, 25 down, 25 to go. Looks like this giant pack finally starting to get itself sorted out and none too soon as they're almost at the point of no return when it comes to these battles. They have got to start getting themselves in a line, get focused up and start charging up towards the front runners. Who are now locked in a side by side battle of their own for the final podium position. Harvey continues to lead. Whitaker still on the inside line, or Eric Monaco, sorry, still on the inside line. Mateo Whitaker has never 
dropped off from that top line. He has been hanging on strong. Whitaker really knows how to work the top shelf at tracks like these, so Luke Soil Raceway definitely playing into his strengths as all this side-by-side -side fighting has allowed for Trent, Kirk Shaw, and J.B. Tanner to get into the mix. But now with these drivers clear, question is, can they run down Chris Harvey in enough time? 1.6 seconds, we'll watch that gap as we will check in on, once again, some of the battles deeper in the field. How about Colin Cropley? Trying to take the fight to Nathan Orman. This field goes single file out. Want to ride on board with your second place driver, Eric Monaco. There you can see Harvey just up the way. And here you can see over the last few laps, Chris Harvey has been slower by one to two tenths consistently. Lap after lap. We're going to check it again here as we come to the conclusion of lap 33. Slower by another few hundredths. Eric Monaco is definitely the faster driver. He got slowed up, though, by Chris Harvey trying to overtake him for second place. But as you can see, he has left him a long way back in third place. So now Monaco is set to try and run down Harvey for the race lead. Slower by another tenth. He's going to get there by the end of this race, that's for sure. see your top 10 all on the leaderboards and if we switch things over you'll be able to check in on the bottom two who are still on the lead lap but not sure if they're going to be an actual proper winning contention or if they'll even be going a lap down they actually might go a lap down before this race is over but who knows that would definitely play have a huge hand to play now these fights uh, step on out Ryder Chisholm is making the move on Casey Wells to the low side of three and four This is the fight for ninth place. It's Exalta versus Red Bull down the back straightaway. On board, Ryder Chisholm is working that top line with Casey Wells down low. You can see this on the suspension, Casey Wells down on the bottom side. This is from the look of Keith Marks, who's right behind them all. Tell you what, Marks is front row seats of this battle here, and uh, one driver that's got rear view seats of this whole fight is the one right in front of the Mitchell Hodak, who can see it in his rear view mirror. Ten laps to go from the Lucas Oil Raceway, and Eric Monaco has continued to close in the gap to race leader Chris Harvey up the road. Just six, ten separated them, and he's got the draft. Battles on for third. Kirk Shaw once again trying to execute a pass on Mateo Whitaker. But he's really struggling to try to find speed in the number 77 car.
We've also got J.B. Tanner and Garen Newbury in the thick of this fierce fight for the final podium positions. We're well under 10 laps to go now. So now is going to be that question of who's going to make a, a desperate move first. We've also got Eric Monaco, who is now caught up to Chris Harvey in the fight for the race lead. So when does Monaco make the move? As these guys have been able to attest to all race long, catch it as one thing, passing is very much another. No pressure from behind. I wonder if Monaco is going to wait for Chris Harvey to run into lap traffic in the form of Ben Cohen, who's just up the road. Oh, he made a little peek there. He's going to lunge forward into three and four this time by, but he's too shallow on the entry, so he's not able to properly go for the maneuver. Lap traffic gonna get in the way. Ben Cohen staying up top, forcing Harvey to the low side where there's no speed. Monaco will try to follow suit. Almost into the back nerf bar of the number eight car that time for the 98. Looking for the inside once again, into turn number four, two laps to go. Still looking for that inside line, but I don't think he's going to be able to get there. He's going to have to try for something on this last lap, but he's way too wide on the edge of the three and four. Loses about a tenth and a half. White flag in the air. Monaco's got to get a great drive out of the turn number two here to make something in the three and four, but he's not going to be able to get there. He's going to get in line, and he's going to give it up. Chris Harvey out of turn four will win the season over in the limited late model division. What a race from the Lucas Oil race boy. We already had one opening race that was something to remember for the pro late model division. And then the limited modified series gives us the closest finish we've had so far in the short track thunder. Let's take a look then at your official post-race results from this division's season opener. Chris Harvey takes the race win over Eric Monaco by three tenths of a second. Trent Kirkshaw rounds out the podium over a second behind. For there's Mateo Whitaker and J.B. Tanner with Garrett Newbury picking up the sixth position. Mitchell Hodak is in seventh with Scott Gray in eighth. Casey Wells is ninth. Ryder Chisholm made up the most spots out of anybody. He was plus seven. He finishes tenth. Keith Mars is in eleventh place with Ezekiel Froze in twelfth. Nathan Orman will be thirteenth with Colin Cropley in fourteenth. Alex Benoy was in the fifteenth uh, position with the likes of LJ. T Sorry, uh, Darcy Byron in 16th, LJ Toledo in 17th, Michael Brown was in 18th. So there you got Hermie Weatherman down the most spots out of anybody, eight on his day. He'll finish in 19th. Casey Knoll, Kurt Newton, and Ben Cohen round out the field with Ben Cohen finishing one lap down. What a race to open up the limited modified series. Still a lot more action to come over the course of the night as we continue through tonight's program. Three races left. The Stock Truck Cup is up next.
And well, we're back once more with more from the Short Track Thunder as we continue through uh, tonight's program at the Lucas Oil Raceway. And we hit the midway point in the Stock Truck Cup for the second uh, race of their season. And the third race we have here tonight, we move on over into the Gen 4 Challenge and wrap it up with the Super Late Model Division. Already, you've got drivers lined up and ready to rumble. So we'll take a run down through your starting grid as this field gets set to roll off onto the racetrack. Orman's on pole. Stephen Cologne, 9 hundredths of a second back. He is in second place. Mitchell O'Brien is in third with Mitchell Hodak up in the top five and four. Derry Monaco is in fifth. Michael Brown in sixth. Austin Wheeler is seventh. Shelby Little is in eighth. Cynthia Stone's ninth. James Winterbottom is in tenth. You've got Alex Benoit in 11th place with Ryder Chisholm down in 12. From there, it's Timothy Benning with Jack Cooper. Veronica Benke is up next, and she is joined uh, by LJ Toledo with Donnie Katnick over there uh, in 17th. Colin Cropley is 18th. Chris York, Ross McLeod, Gordon Newfeld, and Chris Baskerville round out the field. Had herself some very, very solid races so far tonight. And the Stock Truck Cup at the National Fairgrounds Speedway had one awesome race as well. We're looking to see what they'll bring to the table for the Lucas Oil Raceway as well. Obviously, both series so far have been very top line heavy races. Expect no different from this 22 truck field rounding the circuit. Pace cars in. Mitchell O'Brien launches in three and four. We're underway. One lap led for Nathan Norman. Stephen Cologne tucks in line behind him. These guys getting themselves sorted a lot earlier than the S or the limited modified division did earlier on. But that's not to say we're still not going to be in for one awesome race of side-by-side -side action. The 69, Michael Brown looking for the inside of Mitchell O'Brien's speed co 35. But no room for a hole. Possibly going three wide down into turn numbers three and four. We will be three wide. The 91 car trying for the middle. Sorry, that, yeah, that is the 91 there. If Donnie Katnick who tried to go up the middle of both Veronica Benke and Colin Cropley. That didn't work out so well for her, though. So she'll tuck back in line. Mitchell O'Brien still in a side-by-side -side fight with Michael Brown with the four of Eric Monaco just watching onto the wings. So as we continue to work our way through this 70 lap race, we'll let you enjoy the sights and sounds as these trucks put these machines to the test.
30 laps to go from both of the drivers uh, in this field. You've got two people one lap down already. Gordon Newfeld and Chris Baskerville, both of them were lapped prior to the halfway point, and it's looking like Baskerville might even be lapped twice before this race is over. It's 29 laps to go for race leader Nathan Ormond, who has uh, been kind of hanging even with they, uh, with uh, second place runner Stephen Colon. They have not been able to uh, get itself sorted about who's the fastest driver. It looks like they're just that evenly matched. Bit of a shame that we couldn't see that battle for the race lead develop like we saw uh, in that very brief limited modified division race uh, just a little while ago, about 15 minutes past. Mitchell Hodak is trying to fend off Eric Monaco in the fight for third place. Meanwhile, though, so you've still got battles up and down uh, throughout this field, as is the norm with short track races like these. Overall, this has actually been one of the tamer races we've seen so far this season. A lot more processional single file racing. That's more just with how bulky these trucks are, though. It's that much more difficult to be able to make moves, and I expect we'll be seeing something similar when we go racing in the Gen 4 Challenge with the Arc Menards Chevrolet Impala in just a little while here after this race is concluded. Tell you what, that Home Depot F-150 though is really working on the Dunder Mifflin machine. As up top, 42 Mitchell Hodak continues to try to work his way up onto a podium. Such a difficult task to do though at a racetrack like this and you can see just how much he is struggling to hang on to the top shelf, and it looks like he'll lose it here off of four. Give Eric Monaco third place. It's one of the closer battles we've had so far tonight, way in the background here between Chris York, Veronica Bengi, and Donnie Katnick. This is all for uh, 18th, 19th, and 20th place. And we see race leader Nathan Orman right behind this group and about to lap them as well. Also got this scrap that we were tuning in a little bit while while we were just listening to the sights and sounds. The Pepsi Challenger machine of Michael Brown has been Battling now back and forth with James Winterbottom's Series XM Toyota Tundra. Well, in most battles, as we just saw there, it doesn't really tend to go anywhere as the car attacking usually has to end up just giving up and tucking back in line. If you're still with the nose behind the car you're trying to overtake by the time you realistically hit the turning point, it's going to be so difficult to carry that momentum over and make it into a successful overtake. And that is what we are really seeing here as you know, drivers are really struggling up and down all throughout the field. And it's something that a lot of these guys are having to be very, very cautious with. It's a case of what do you want to do when you get into battles like these? Do you want to take a chance that you'll find yourself you know, slipping a little bit further down the order? Also got this scrap between Ryder Chisholm and last week's pole sitter Shelby Little. The DoorDash Silverado though not having the best of form today. 13 seconds back behind race leader Nathan Orman, which is honestly a bit surprising when you consider how strong of a run Little had finishing up in the top five just uh, the last event at Nashville. It's about to be bumped down to eighth here if Ryder Chisholm can have a say. Check back in on Chris York. 
still looking to work the outside of the 91 of Donnie Katnick in his waist quit 26 F-150. Problem is, though, he's also got the race leader, Nathan Orman, right behind him and bearing down on Orman. It is actually Stephen Cologne who has been steadily reeling in time now as a result of all this lap traffic. So he might actually get this race sorted for the lead before it's over. And I one car goes to the outside, and this is where it gets risky. We've also got the 15 car about to go two laps down to the thick of this as well. How do you negotiate this? Races, when they're this long, can be won or lost, depending on how you manage lap traffic. And Orman's lack of managing them is what is allowing Nathan Orman to close right, or Stephen Colon to close right up to the back of him. So the 15 truck goes down a second lap as Orman will look to the inside now of York. It's tough though to pass on the inside. You can tell how much Ormond is struggling to make that stick as the 26 lets him go off of turn number four. And that will have to do the same to Stephen Cologne, which is gonna cost Chris York a lot of time up to Donnie Katnick, who's up the road from him. Then, of course, you get the hazards of drivers battling each other up the road, like Veronica Bank and Donnie Katnick are. And now you're even left with an even bigger, oh, well, what do I do here type of situation. Also got Colin Cropley just up the road in his own scrap with Ross McLeod. Although it looks like McLeod's going to end up backing out of that one. Coming to 10 laps to go this time by, and Nathan Ormond has just gotten around Katnick as Stephen Cologne continues to try and close in the gap. Check back in on Micah Brown and Mitchell Hodak as, once again, Brown tries to overtake Shelby Little. It's always a case, though, of, oh, nope, not here. Got to try to find another way around some of the point. He just cannot make that bottom line stick to save his life, and it's going to really cost him in the long run here. Every point matters in a championship like this, and Michael Brown is struggling to pick up whatever points he can. Right in the thick of lap traffic are both of your race leaders, Nathan Orman and Stephen Cologne. Orman stuck behind a battle in Veronica Benke and Alex Benoit, and Stephen Cologne still trying to get by Donnie Caddick, who refuses to let him go from the top side. Kind of frustrating for Stephen Cologne back here who just cannot get around the 91 truck who is uh, really sticking it on that outside line, not letting them through. Meanwhile, Nathan Ormond gradually working past lap car after lap car right in front of him. Now Cologne gets around him and he's immediately going to lunge to the inside of Benke trying to pick him off quickly. Now pulls alongside Nathan Ormond. Here we go, side by side for the race lead. Six laps to go. About 10 laps ago, you wouldn't think this battle was coming about with three seconds separating them, but now Stephen Cologne will rocket into the race lead as Orman is held up behind the 40. Gordon Newfield just went down a second lap as Stephen Cologne is up and into the race lead. He 
ride on board Horvath is all he can do is watch Cologne start to pull away. How about this for a fight that we didn't see uh, coming a little while ago? James Winterbottom just pounced on Michael Brown as Brown fell off massively for Mitchell Hodak after the failed lunge. And now Winterbottom will find his way up in a fifth place. They continue the battle. We're going to quickly check in. As, wow, yeah, that was a very opportunistic push on the exit of four, but he managed to make it stick. As now it is Stephen Cologne's turn to take two laps to go with now Nathan Orman fading in the rear view mirrors. And he'll round four to take the white flag this time by. Final trip around, and Nathan Orman is not even a threat at the moment for Stephen Colon of the DuPont Toyota Tundra. Might pick off one more lap car just for the heck of it. It would be at the 76 of Ross McLeod. He'll look to the inside. McLeod, now well, it looks like he'll hang on. Stephen Colon wins the second race of the Stock Truck Cup. As one by one drivers cycle across the line, we will once again tune in to your post-race results then here from the Lucas Oil Raceway. And it is none other than Stephen Colon taking the race win away from Nathan Orman, who finishes in second. Eric Monaco is in third with Mitchell Hodak in fourth. James Winterbottom is in fifth with Michael Brown in sixth. Shelby Little will be finishing in seventh with Ryder Chisholm in eighth. You've then got Jack Cooper in ninth with Mitchell O'Brien in 10th. It is Cynthia Stone 11th with Austin Wheeler down in 12th. From there, you've got Timothy Benning in 13th. LJ Toledo was in 14th. Colin Cropley was 15th. Ross McLeod rounded out the drivers on the lead lap in 16th. From there, it's Alex Benoy, Donnie Katnick, Veronica Benke, Chris York, Gordon Neufeld, and Chris Baskerville to round out tonight's 22 truck field. By far the calmest race we have had so far yet in the short track Thunder. And we will be seeing you guys all around next time for when we go racing in the Gen 4 Challenge. We'll see you in two minutes.
As tonight's program continues to grow later and later into the evening, we get set to kick off the Gen 4 Challenge and their season opener here from the Lucas Raceway. If you're just joining us, you've missed some amazing races from the Pro Lane Model Division, the Limited Modified Series, and most recently the uh, Stock Truck Cup. All three of those uh, races have gone green flying through to the end, and meanwhile, we look set to go for a fourth one before we wrap it up with the Super Late Model Division here tonight. 80 laps for 24 cars of the Arkham Menards Chevrolet Impala. These cars, no doubt, going to provide us some of the better racing that we'll be seeing uh, over the course of the night. We'll run down through your uh, champion, sorry, your starting grid for this one as the field already rolling out onto the racetrack. Jack Cooper is your pull sitter with Nathan Orman beside him on the front row. That is David Kennington with Mitchell Hodag on row two. Harold Custer and Michael Brown are in fifth and sixth with Stephen Colon and Anna Lewis in seventh and eighth. Bring up Eric Monaco and LJ Toledo in the top ten. George Malukas and Matteo Berryhill are going to be down in 11th and 12th. Then you got Courtney Osmond in 13th with Tanner Mars in 14th. Xander Lindsay is 15th with Samuel Gardner in 16th. Bobby Bowman is 17th with Stefan Dooley in 18th. Colin Cropley and Alex Benoit. Round out row number 10. For there you got Alexander Peters, JJ Jones, Parker June, and Alan Bark to bring up the rear in his 22 car field. What an amazing uh, race this has been so far tonight as we have had so many fantastic battles up and down throughout these various fields. What can the Gen 4 Challenge though bring to the table? It's a new division getting set to kick off at the Lucas Oil Raceway pace car into pit road we're underway Jack Cooper running the top line, trying to chase down Nathan Orman. Excuse me, other way around as Orman works the top line, trying to get around Cooper for the race lead right out of the gate. Look at the 0-1 car, David Kennington. He's looking to make it three wide up the middle. That's not going to work. Orman clears from the top shelf for the race lead into turn number one. Side by side between Kennington and Hodak for the final podium position as the field thunders down through turns one and two. Kennington going to tuck in line behind the number five of Mitchell Hodak. Jack Cooper, your pull sitter, still under fire as Hodak works the top shelf. Trying to pick up second place of the Kellogg's Chevrolet. And he's through. Nathan Orman, not safe. As immediately Hodak's going to look for the inside and try to make the run of the throw for the race lead. Dive bombs turn three. That low line is usually questionable whether or not that's going to work, but Mitchell Hodak making great use of it off of turn number four, down to the one. But Orman's going to pull clear off of turn two. Hodak's going to have to wait a little bit longer while Kennington is under fire for Cooper for third. Hodak's already looking to make another charge. 
But Mitchell Hodak has found out in prior uh, races tonight that you cannot wait around to make these moves. You have to make them early when the guys are still in reach. But an attack from Jack Cooper will see Hodak slip back. We'll keep tabs on this battle here as Hodak's going to snake back to the inside of one and two, pulling alongside the number 24. Side by side as they cross the line, Hodak leads lap. Number nine. And this time by off of four, he's going to get clear. Mitchell Hodak is into the race lead at lap 10. And you can already see starting to pull away. Back behind these guys, Harold Custer and the target 41. Trying to snake up on Jack Cooper, but Cooper looking for a spot on Kennington. Falls got these battles back here in the field as LJ Toledo attacks Michael Brown with the 48th car of Courtney Osmond waiting the round in the background. Anna Lewis and George Malukas also in the fray. Slightest of touches there between the 21 and the 48 off of uh, turn number four that last time by. And as you can see, a massive chunk of this field Already separated from one another. Way in the background here, the 12 of Mateo Berryhill trying to follow or fend off Alex Benoy. Xander Lindsay is in 17th with Dooley right behind, and you've got the 31 car of Bobby Bowman also in the mix. Well, this battle up here for third continues. Clear for the 41, Kennington will tuck in line for fifth place. They've lost touch up to Cooper and Ormond. We're still fighting out for second to third, just up the road. This is the biggest grouping of cars at the moment on the racetrack between Michael Brown, Toledo, Malukas, Osmond, and Lewis. Grouping of five working their way through turn numbers one and two down to the back straightaway. How about that 16 car? Anna Lewis, she's on the move, just worked one up on Courtney Osman. How about that 21 car? 
trying to make up some ground here on the number one. Malukas still up on the top shelf. You're trying to fend off the 21 for ninth, and he'll do so as the 48 car now goes on the offensive. Courtney Osmond wants to move. And will the 16 try for three up the middle? Anna Lewis goes for it, but has to back out as the 21 sweeps up to chop the nose. While well, this is going on, Stephen Cologne has not had a whole lot of action so far today, but the 43 Cheerios machine now looks for the inside on David Kennington, trying to make up some, uh, some positions to get up into the top five, but it doesn't look like that's going to end up going anywhere, as that's going to actually allow Kennington to get a drive off the outside and fire one down the inside of Custer into one and two. Check back in on some of the battles a bit deeper uh, in this field. How about this one between Stefan Dooley and Matteo Berryhill for uh, 17th, 18th. Sorry, for 17th. This one way in the back here with uh, Cropley in the 8, Xander Lindsay in the 17, and Bobby Bowman in the 31, all working together, fighting for 19th through 21st. But these battles right here remain the closest and the biggest grouping on track from about 13th up to 8th. That 18 just gets so up close to that outside wall and makes it honestly have been amazed that he hasn't hit it yet. But you can see guys like Courtney Oserman uh, starting to pull a bit further away as Anna Lewis will now lead this four car train. Still have Harold Custer also under some fairly heavy fire at the moment for uh, the fourth position is now Kenny to work it inside. Can he secure it this time? That doesn't look like it. Custer is still really fighting off that outside lane. Right up there by the wall in these corners, you can get some serious momentum off of there, but it looks like Custer's just not been able to capitalize a whole lot on that one off of four as he'll try to run it back in one and two. Ah, no move though. Kennington clears.
Still got the midfield battles uh, picking up as well with Michael Brown trying to fight off Samuel Gardner from the top, but Gardner's been so adamant that he wants to make this uh, uh, position happen that it looks like Michael Brown is just going to have to let this one go as Gardner clears off of two. Well, not quite, actually. I think Michael Brown, yeah, had the nose in and pulls alongside right to the door. Lap traffic in the way as the 88 car of Alan Bark checks off a huge cluster of drivers. With Custer on the bottom, you've also got Orman in the mix. So is Cologne, Kennington, Monaco. Cologne will get up and by Nathan Orman in the Cheerios 43 as Custer and Cologne get set to leave Allen Bark behind. Not even halfway and already Mitchell Hodak is working his way through lap traffic. You can see the 17 of Xander Lindsay just up the road. J.J. Jones and Parker June are also in similar boats. Right on board with George Malukas in the Bass Tracker Boats number one as he tries to run down Courtney Osmond's Lowe's 48. Halfway, meanwhile, we're 40 laps down, 40 laps to go. And still caution free. Here from beautiful Lucas Oil Raceway. We'll take a quick step back. We'll be with you with more in just a few moments.
still under green flag conditions with 33 laps to go. David Kennington trying to work to the inside of Stephen Colon, but it looks like the uh, U.S. Army number 01 will not be able to get that spot up just yet. We're at that stage in the race where passing becomes a little bit of a premium and it becomes that much more difficult to make stuff happen. George Belukas still has not been able to find a way to get around Courtney Osmond's number 48. Behind them, you've got Samuel Gardner about a half second back from Anna Lewis and the closest fight on the track is this one right here with Alexander Peters in between Stefan Dooley in the 89 and the eight of Colin Cropley with Jack Cooper working his way through putting these guys laps down as well. Cropley is going to take advantage of that though and will snake to the inside of the Dollar General Chevrolet as Cooper sort of opened up the door by 432 to take a higher entry. It's not going to last, though. Gets that drive down the back straightaway, and the 32 will hang on. We got the 48 of Osman trying to lap Alan Bark. In the Office Depot in 99. You've got uh, the one in the midst here as well. There's the peak to the inside. The number one finally trying to make a move, but the 48 once again outside line reigns supreme as the 48 of Courtney Osmond stays out in front. Not for lack of trying, though, from George Malukas as he still is looking for that inside pass, but it's just not going to happen this late in a run. Although this was going on, Steven Cologne just made up a pass on Harold Custer as using the 12 car of Mateo Berryhill as a pick and allowed himself to get up and into uh, the third position. And it looks like Kennington might try to do the same as Harold Custer still has not been able to get around that number 12 car. This is the problem with having a, you know, an outside heavy racetrack, obviously, First instant for lap cars is most likely to go up high. Well, that's where all the speed is. So they get these unintended runs off of the corners and that is what is making it so difficult for these guys to work through lap traffic. But it seems like for the most part, they have been doing just fine. And like we saw, 48 trying with the one he is going to continue to try to make these looks and I have a feeling this will come down to lap traffic Samuel Gardner still trying to overtake Anna Lewis as well to the National Guard number 16 
And we'll look forward to uh, when these guys are going to be coming on up next. And good thing for the Gen 4 uh, Challenge. If this is the type of race that you guys are you know, enjoying over there at home, the best place for you to visit will, of course, be the Hickory uh, Motor Speedway, which will be uh, the next race up, where I believe they will be out for their second race. And, in fact, they will. And also out uh, next week will be the Stock Division for their second race. You'll also have... Pro Late Model Series out for their third race, going on a triple header back to back to back before they take a one uh, race break. The Tour Modified Division will be out for their first race, and then obviously the Stock Truck Cup will be out for their third event as well. So lots to look forward to then at uh, Hickory Speedway. Harold Custer fighting Stephen Cologne and David Kennington in the mix of this as well. This is all the battle for. A uh, third place at the moment. And lap traffic once more not helping things as the aid of Colin Cropley about to be lapped by your third place fight. It doesn't help as well that the 8 is actively in a battle with the 89 of Stefan Dooley. Obviously, they are more than allowed to battle. They do not have to move out of the way for the leaders. And that is what is causing Cologne to be held up here. This is what it looks like from on board David Kennington. As you can see, it's not a pleasant sight uh, up there in this field. Properly just cleared Dually, so I think that might make it a bit easier now for these lead lap cars to start trying to find a way through. Oh, we're going to go three wide, splitting lap traffic. Custer up top, the 43 down low. They're still side by side. Down the back straightaway, Kennington gets left in the dust behind them. Well, that was a move. We haven't seen that just yet, but neither driver wanted to be held up. They were both done with it, but now Cologne will secure third place as the 41 of Harold Custer gets held up behind Cropley. Custer has really lost touch now to Stephen Colon. You can see him just got around the uh, 26 car of Alex Benoit, but David Kennington still is nice and tight uh, with the back end of that number 41. So there is a real possibility here that Kennington might still overtake Harold Custer uh, before the end of this race. This is at the moment the only battle you've really got on track at the moment, apart from the one right behind them with Colin Cropley trying to race Alexander Peters. This is at the 5 4 16th. A 
say that you got one other battle picking on up just behind these guys as Xander Lindsay and Mateo Berryhill are getting a bit tight for a 20th place with Western Auto 17 chasing down the mobile one number 12. He's actually going to lunge for the inside here up into turn one. Meanwhile, David Kennington does pull alongside the outside of Harold Custer, but it's a hell, it's a check of courtesy of Alex Benoit. Oh, Kennington forces it on the outside and he's through on Custer. What a run for the outside line there from the U.S. Army 0-1 as he made great use of that pass and of, of lap traffic there. You've also still got Colin Cropley trying to do battle with the 32 car. But they are also being lapped by the 24 of Nathan Ormond. Peter's still up top. You've got Cropley still fighting that low side, but definitely struggling here for the number eight Taco Bell machine. He's just not able to properly pull alongside for the pass. Harold Custer still has not been able to get up to David Kennington ever since he got overtaken a lap ago, and it looks like that will not be happening uh, throughout the rest of this race as well. Meanwhile, you've got Mitchell Hodak about to lap George Malukas. He has lapped all the way up to 10th place. Mitchell Hodak has been absolutely flying through this field with so many drivers a lap down. He has got two seconds back to Jack Cooper and no competition whatsoever. Out of turns one, sorry, out of turns three and four, Mitchell Hodak wins his first race. He scores one for the Gen 4 Challenge. An amazing race then for the Gen 4 Challenge. Once again, very, very clean for everybody involved. We're going to get a look at uh, your official post-race results as it will be Mitchell Hodak winning by a very handsome two seconds. Jack Cooper sits down in second place. Stephen Colon is all the way back in third. Nine seconds, sorry, seven seconds back. Kennington and Custer did not swap position for fourth. They'll sit fourth and fifth. Nathan Norman was in sixth with Eric Monaco in seventh. LJ Toledo was down uh, in eighth with Courtney Osmond in ninth. George Malukas was the last car in the lead lap, and he'll also round out the top ten. From there, you'll have the likes of Anna Lewis with Samuel Gardner in 12th. Michael Brown was 13th. Tanner Marks was 40th. Alex Benoit rounded out the top 15. For there, you've got Alexander Peters, Colin Cropley, 
Stefan Dooley, Bobby Bowman, Matteo Berryhill, Xander Lindsay, J.J. Jones, Parker June, and Alan Bark. The bottom three finishing not one, but two laps down. Still lots of race action to be had, though, as we've still got one more race tonight. Stay tuned for the super late model division coming on up in just a moment. So we get set for the final race tonight. It's the super late model division for their second race of the season here for short track thunder from the Lucas Oil Raceway. 19 drivers getting set to kick off for 70 laps of racing action. Eric Bonner goes on pole position with Mitchell Hodak, seven hundredths of a second behind him on the front row. Ronald Pierce is in third with Steven Colon is in fourth. Blake Mears sits in fifth with Nathan Orman in sixth. Ross Colbert is seventh. Jonah Tanner is in eighth. Jeff Wallace is ninth with Colin Cropley in tenth. But they've got Mitchell O'Brien, Michael Brown, Billy May, LJ Toledo, Timmy Richmond, Alex Benoit, Matt Jones, AJ Thompson, and Willard Burton rounding out tonight's 19 car super late model field it is bound to be one entertaining 70 laps of racing action as we look at how the point standings uh, shake up in your super late model division after last week's rumble with hodak up there in the points lead after winning last uh, week's race now obviously steven cologne will be looking to improve on that one but cologne started the row behind so might have his work cut out for him maybe though Eric Monaco can improve in his positioning. He finished 14th uh, in race number one in Nashville, but he'll start on pole here tonight. Want to once again thank everybody for taking the time to join us for what has been an awesome round of short track thunder. We go green for the final time here in the Super Late Model Division. Green flag is going to be in the air off of four. Green flag. Hodak takes it high, wide, and handsome as we blaze down onto the front straightaway, and he'll secure the lead down in the turn number one, making the move on Eric Monaco early to get around the number 21 car. And even further behind him, Stephen Colonna, the number eight car, going to go for the crossover. Exited high for two, trying to go down low to make the run for second place. Not going to happen. Blake Mears will sit in fourth from Pierce, from Orman. Jonah Tanner sits in seventh. He's side by side with Ross Colbert on the bottom in the battle for eighth. And
And even further down the order, the battle still rage on as we look to LJ Toledo and Billy May racing side by side off of turn number two. Billy May trying to hang on against Toledo. Timmy Richmond wants to find a way through as well. The 75 car of Michael Brown also under some heavy fire. Battles are raging on throughout this field. Hodak already pulling away by over a second as Eric Monaco looks like he'll fall vi victim to Stephen Colon, who's going to look to put himself up in a second. Cologne goes through. Now we'll see if he can try to run down Mitchell Hodak up there for the race lead. Eric Monaco was great in qualifying, but is looking to be slipping back as Nathan Orman moves up into third. Here comes Blake Beers looking for the inside lane and the Altel Dodge Charger. Not going to be able to have any kind of space, though. The 21 car hangs on for now. Jonah Tanner going to go on the offensive after noticing Ronald Pierce falter and... That will allow him to make up a spot as Ronald Pierce hangs around just at the wings, trying to also find a way through. Down in the turns one and two for the seventh time tonight. Mears still working underneath Ronald Pierce. Colbert gives up in his efforts to try to go after Jeff Wallace. That 80 car, though, still wants to find some ground. Looking for three wide. Up the bottom, the 95 of Ronald Pierce backs out from the top as Jonah Tanner tries to hang on for the top five. And all of this while Mitchell Hodak gets further and further out in front from second place runner Stephen Colon, who has not been able to come even close to getting up to him. Monaco once again under fire, this time for four. This Jonah Tanner gets alongside, tries to force the issue off of turn four, and in fact, he will. So Monaco continues to slip as he's going to fall all the way back now into fifth. Now just trying to hang on for a top five finish period after he started this race on pole. That does seem to be a trend of Eric Monaco here in the Super Lane Model Division. It was the same story last week. He was great in qualifying, but could not muster any kind of long-term race pace. Looks like that trend will continue here at Lucas Oil. A little bit of a nudge there from the 80 up into the 21, trying to force Monaco closer to the wall. Monaco not letting himself be bullied out of this position, though he is going to fight hard to try to hang on for whatever he can. And he's going to get clear of the 80 car down the front straightaway into turn number one. That allows Ronald Pierce now to try to go on the offensive against Blake Mears as Jeff Wallace hangs out in the wings. On board with the 95, Garzi rides that top lane. Only side-by-side -side battle we've got on the racetrack at the moment is this one in the fight for sixth. As Ronald Pierce continues to try to fend off Blake Miller from the inside lane, and Mears continues to work that bottom side, trying to find any kind of speed. Great on entry, but just falters so much on corner exit and looks at like the 95 car might finally get cleared down to turn one this time by not going to be able to Blake Mears still hanging tough Jeff Wallace still running up top as well Wallace looking low around the inside here of Ronald Pierce gonna go too wide two rows deep 
And heads up for that 51 car of Ross Colbert, who's still going to try to find a way through. Shoving it in is Blake Mears, who is going to clear off a of turn four for P5 down the front straightaway. Now he can start to try to run down Joe, uh, Jonah Tanner up the road. And as Monaco continues to fall back, you had seen Jeff Wallace get up and buy him for sixth place. Monaco now hovers in seven or in eighth place as he's got Colbert on the bottom and is trying to fight it out with Colbert in the battle for seventh place. This is allowing Billy May to slowly start reeling this grouping in in his iRacing machine from right behind the 51 car to the inside of the 21 down the run straight away. The 95 of Ronald Pierce wanting to throw his hat into the ring as well. Still remains the closest battle on track at the moment. This grouping of three all in a line together as we continue to let these guys just duke it out amongst themselves. Billy May has entered the fray into the five or seventh place. Monaco gets clear finally of Colbert. But now it's worried about Ronald Pierce who's charging hard on the outside line and might actually take this one away from Monaco off of four down the front straightaway. In fact, he will. Ronald Pierce makes an excellent move there. Good judgment call as he'll move up into seventh. Monaco continues to tumble down the order as he falls back to eighth. Keep eyes on that 21 of Eric Monaco as we'll see how far back the Chevrolet will slip as the iHeart Mac and Cheese and more machine has been doing a not so stellar job of trying to work his way back up and past Ross Colbert. Who will finally clear that makes a single vial for really the first time all race long. Checking out some of the battles further down to the order. How about this one for 12th place between Timmy Richmond, LJ Toledo with Colin Cropley watching off and behind. It's Mustang versus Chevy down the back straightaway up in a turn number three as the 96 of Toledo looks underneath Richmond trying to make up a spot. The number one of Mitchell O'Brien pulling away in front of them. But once again, that outside lane has really been rubbed in now. So you can see just how much stronger it is with these cars than it was for guys earlier on, especially when you look at races like that of the limited modified division earlier uh, tonight. Really is not going to stop Toledo, though, from looking to hunt down that inside line and force a move on the 50 car, but it just won't happen. If there's no grip down there, there's no grip down there. And right now, any grip that might have been there at the start of the night has been absolutely destroyed. For last, the last places on the field, A.J. Thompson, Alex Benoya, Matt Jones going at it. You've got Thompson on the bottom and Benoya and Jones both up top. Benoya, sorry, A.J. Thompson was looking to get around Alex Benoya for 16th, but instead 
will actually almost lose out the spot here to Matt Jones off of turn four down the front stretch. And way in the background, Mitchell Hodak steadily reeling them in. Willard Burton has been put one lap down officially in this field as Mitchell Hodak continues to rip around the Lucas Oil Raceway with his nearest competition being Stephen Colon, a second and a half back in the number eight car. And as you can see, Willard Burton is having less than stellar time. I think he's about to be a lap here by Nathan Ormond as well in his number 18 machine. Checking back in on this battle for sixth place, Ronald Pierce has been steadily catching up to Jeff Wallace and is now looking to attack the number 24 car through turns one and two. Oh, there's a peek to the inside. Is the Chevy going to go for it? So the Brandt car is going to make an effort. But the Aaron's 24 pulled strong from the top shelf, and I think it is going to be very much a thing of desperation if you're going to actually manage to make your pass work on the inside lane. You have to rely on your opponents making mistakes, but at the super late model division, these guys are top game. Mistakes do not come easy. And this track is a significant bit wider than we had seen the National Fairgrounds Speedway, so a three-wide wreck involving lap traffic is very unlikely, which is what brought out the first yellow flag of the whole short track Thunder season that was not for a competition yellow. Also got Timmy Richmond in the LJ Toledo still battling out for 12th position as well as Richmond has found the outside of Toledo down the front straightaway, trying to move his way up a third spot on the night. But not going to be able to do so as Toledo will clear. They are all catching up to Mitchell O'Brien pretty steadily, as a matter of fact. So that number one car has lost a chunk, a huge chunk of time as let's say the exalted number one about to be put under fire by Toledo. Halfway down, 35 laps have been completed, 35 laps to go. Even further back, Alex Benoy and Matt Jones fight it out for 16th place with the 15 car of A.J. Thompson right behind them. O'Brien really looking to run that top shelf here, trying to find a way around LJ Toledo. He has not been successful thus far, but he's got a great run this time in the turn number one. He's going to get alongside the 96. Will it be the move this time around for the HendrickCars.com Super Late Model? No, it won't. The gear wrench Mustang stays in front for another lap. Jeff start thinking though it's only going to be a matter of time with how quick of a car Mitchell O'Brien has been uh, has been piloted underneath, underneath him. That orange car at the back is race leader as AJ Thompson has caught to Alex Benoit and is lunging for the inside, trying to not be the next car to go a lap down. This is where Mitchell Hodak's race has potential to fall apart if he gets too held up by a lap traffic here. Stephen Colon will start to run him down. Mm 
Thompson still trying to find the bottom of Alex Benoit, but is not able to push up as he's got race leader Mitchell Hodak up on his outside line, trying to work his way through. Tim Richmond has caught up to Mitchell O'Brien. I talked about this at Nashville. Short track racing is one of those disciplines where if you don't get past the guy in front of you, the guy behind you is going to get through you instead. That's what's happened to Mitchell O'Brien as Timmy Richmond, who's already plus two on the day, has caught up to O'Brien and is now trying to overtake for 12th place. That allows Toledo to build a bit of a gap and some breathing room in that fight for 11th. We talked about Eric Monaco, who has been losing spot after spot since the drop of the green flag. He started up on pole. He has now fallen all the way back to ninth. He's about to lose that as well as Billy May looks for the inside into the iRacing Chevrolet number 84, trying to find some speed and bump Monaco to the bubble spot of the top 10 with 25 laps to go. May will get ninth place at the stripe, but still has not completed that pass as Monaco is still fighting for whatever spots he can. He does not want to give this up, but eventually he will be forced to as Billy May clears for ninth, and Toledo going to be the next one back to try to make a run on Eric Monaco. Matt Jones and Michael Brown both laps down as they continue to fight for 15th position. Meanwhile, Mitchell O'Brien once again having to fend off Timmy Richmond, who is still incessantly looking for that inside lane to try to take away 12th. He's going to dive it into turn one, but he's not going to have the momentum off the corner. O'Brien pinching him into the inside lane. That is smart, and look at that. Forces the 50 card to abandon his overtake attempt. So Mitchell O'Brien, while he might have been on defense for most of this race, he absolutely knows by now how to defend. Up the road, there's Eric Monaco, who is still having to work on defense himself from LJ Toledo. All of this while well, you've got Billy May up the road. And there's the 34 card, the Alltel Dodge Charger of Willard Burton now being laughed by the 10th place car. Uh, Monaco can't get a drive off and that's going to open up the door for LJ Toledo. High side, one and two. Toledo's problem is though, he's got that charger that's really blocking him in. He can't go anywhere. And that will buy Eric Monaco another lap or two. Both drivers will get around the 34 car from the bottom line. As we continue to observe some of these battles throughout this field, how about the STP 15 of AJ Thompson still has not left Alex Benoit alone in his number 16 Chevrolet. This has been a fairly Solid fight we've been having for 17th place. It might be for the back spots, but hey, when you get points every single spot, each one of those points is absolutely going to have a huge impact on the championship, and you need every single one that you can get. Thompson realizes that this, so does Benoy. So Benoy will be looking, no doubt, to try to challenge back. Leave it up now to Matt Jones and Michael Brown, still scrapping for. 15th place. Brown is down three for ES started today. Jones has been up one though and is trying to make that two. Mm -hmm. 
16 laps remaining as Billy May and Eric Monaco work the back straightaway. You can see LJ Toledo closing in in the background. Now Monaco's been on defense. He wants to go into offense. You can see by how he looked to the inside of the number 84, but he's just not able to get any kind of speed on that bottom lane. All the rubber's been pushed up to that outside wall, so he's having a really hard time of things, but he is you know, power to him. He is really going for that inside lane. He is not giving up. Gives us one entertaining race to watch as I don't think he's going to be able to really make anything of it, though, as Billy May has been holding that outside lane relentlessly and does not allow Monaco to get so much as up to the nose. Monaco this time pulls ahead, and he's going to clear off of four. Not quite. Billy May still in there and still trying to make this work in the fight for ninth as he's going to go up high. Meanwhile, fight's also on for fourth as Jonah Tanner and Blake Mears start to battle it out. The 02 and the 80 going at it as they've caught A.J. Thompson way back in 17th place. They're trying to lap him, which is where this side-by-side -side battle comes from. Jonah Tanner making good use of that lap. Traffic has a pick. He's going to force Blake Mears back into fifth. But Tanner is also not able to get necessarily the best of runs off of these corners, and it would help if he would look inside and try to follow uh, Tanner through. But, I mean, if Tanner's having a good run, I mean, why follow him? Just stay up on the top and let the lap car do the work. But once again... All this slowly starts to drag in Ronald Pierce. Still a second out, but that could quickly become zero seconds very, very quickly. Jessel Lewis up the road. You've got Matt Jones and Michael Brown. Both of them also one lap down as they fight for 15th place. Brown has been trying lap after lap to get around Matt Jones' 35 car, but has not been able to do so. And you've still got Richmond and O'Brien in their battle for 12th place as O'Brien has not been letting Timmy Richmond get through, but Richmond has not been going away by any stretch of the means. It's worth noting there are also the next cars that will get lapped by Mitchell Hodak, potentially even by the end of this race, and that could very well have an impact as to how this battle plays out. Five laps to go for Mitchell Hodag, who is right behind that battle for 15th, right in front of you. You've also got still this fight for seventh place. Make that sixth between Ronald Pierce in the 95 car and Jeff Wallace's Aaron's Chevrolet.
it's already amazing that this bat alone is already about 10 seconds behind Mitchell Hodak and just about 65 laps, give or take. That is actually about half a lap that these guys are behind. Really shows just how fast Mitchell Hodak has been. He's already pulled out a two-second gap over Stephen Colon as well. Richmond's found the inside of O'Brien. This might very well be it here. O'Brien can't get a good drive here off of turn four, and he doesn't. Timmy Richmond trying to secure the one and two, washing up, trying to keep Mitchell O'Brien behind. It's two laps to go. White fly this time by. Hodak is there. Will he let this one fight it out, or is he going to try to find a way through? White flag in the air, it's two laps to go for your battle for 12th place at the moment, assuming Hodak doesn't try to find a way through them. Down the back straightaway, Hodak will let this one play out. No, he won't, he'll look to the outside of the 50 car and Mitchell Hodak goes back to back in the super late model division and he will end your battle between Richmond and O'Brien as he laps Richmond at the checkered flag. Blake Mears just held off Jonah Tanner for fourth place as well by about one hundredth of a second. So some awesome battles coming through to the checkered flag. And actually made this a potential last lap pass and it was a last lap pass. Blake Mears lunged over the inside of Jonah Tanner off of turn four and secured it but only just at start finish. So with everything said and done, we're gonna take a look at your official post race results and it is Mitchell Hodak once again, taking a solid race win here in the Super Late Model Division from Stephen Cologne by just over two seconds. From there, you will have Nathan Norman in third with Blake Beers 10 seconds back and forth, just overtaking Jonah Tanner by about six thousandths of a second there. We've got Ronald Pierce down in sixth place, Jeff Wallace in seventh, Ross Colbert was in eighth, Eric Monaco was ninth, LJ Toledo rounds out the top 10, Billy Mayo, Mitchell O'Brien rounded out the last cars on the lead lap. From there, you've got Timmy Richmond with Colin Cropley. Following this, you will have uh, Sorry, lost my spot of a minute. Matt Jones with Michael Brown at 16th. Then it's A.J. Thompson, Alex Benoit, Willa Burton finish this race two laps down. We will uh, obviously take a run through at what your championship standings look like after this second race. And honestly, it's almost a little bit predictable how this one shook up. Not a whole lot of movers. Surprising for a second race. Sometimes, though, short track racing can be a little bit more predictable at some tracks than others. For Luke Soil Raceway, it was definitely a more predictable night. But guaranteed hickory. A much smaller track than the one, uh, two we've been to prior. Under half a mile, Hickory Speedway going to be one barn burner of a show. Over there, you are going to have, I believe, uh, the stock division. It's going to be out for their uh, third race of the season. As well as that, you will uh, be having the Pro Late Model Series out for their third race. The Tour Modified Division will have their season opener, followed by the Gen 4 Challenge and the Stock Truck Cup will both be out for more. For now, though, for the Lucasfilm Raceway, that's all we're going to have time for. I want to thank you all for taking the time to join us here once again for more action for the Short Track Thunder. We'll see you all next time at the Hickory Motor Speed.